check to make sure it's all going all right. I think it is. I think it's starting all right. Oh, oh let's check for sound. It's all going yep. all right. Okay. It's been a few days. I had a great birthday and the day after. So I had some time to kind of enjoy enjoy myself and do a few things outside of the stream. So, But it's really nice to be back. Kind of curious about what was going on in the in the game. So good to see that it hasn't. Uh, I haven't totally forgot how things are going. Well, we won't know until we get back into combat, I guess. Yeah, hold on, let's let's just use the toilet one more time. Oh, that's a broken toilet. That means we can uh, check that out and take a toilet brush. There we go, and a locker. There's actually a few things we can grab back here. They don't seem to care. It's locked, but they don't seem to care. Hold on. Crump could try. How about you, Crump? Oh, you got it. You got this, Crump. You're an absolute... Okay. Force it or lockpick it? I mean, it might as well force it. Just rip it open. <laughs> so, the good thing is, is it's, uh... Nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared about us just ripping that open. Actually, speaking about it, now that we have Crump here, he can do a lot of things for us. Uh, phys phys uh, physique wise there's a few things that we couldn't get into and crump's gonna be able to get into everything that we need <laughs> he's gonna be our he's gonna be our universal lock pick human lock pick here as long as we don't do something to annoy him I don't think we will uh, try not to but first thing we need to do is start looting this place barren there's plenty of stuff to grab also maybe find out some what to sell. Is I think that we need to start getting into... Oh, hold on. Oh, that's what he's wearing. Fargo pants and handyman's jacket. Okay. Take all. We need to kind of start planning out party-wise what we're doing. I'm surprised so many things are just like... You can take them. I kind of like that because... Uh, I know I have less... I have more stuff that's just out in the open to take versus having to have it all be hidden behind stealing because it can uh i as a as a person who doesn't typically steal a lot in video games which might seem rare i like the ability to avoid it it's funny like non-violence particularly my brother likes when he's playing games to, to have non-violent options i really like that ever since no gear solid uh four that i played um, but a big one for me is not having to steal everything. Is that because, uh, hold on. Let's see, maybe he can drive. Crump, can you drive? No, honk the line. There we go. <laughs> wonder, hold on. Just as a check, I wonder what happens if I just keep honking the horn. <laughs> Anyone want to come over and move this for us? Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, that's not that big a deal. We can check out the scientific terminal, though. I'm guessing since everything has gone down the drain, not so many. There's not so many laws we have to to, to reference again. You put your electron into the slot in the terminal on the terminal casing, but it's only um it's a displeased squeak. The following message shows up on the screen: access denied, account not found. So we can kind of. Play a little less by the book for our manager here. <laughs> Even if we try to still keep somewhat upstanding. Uh, that's all empty. There's one more supply barrel over here. The amount of stuff, though, has me wondering if there's a re loot respawn. I'm kind of curious. Because, honestly, part of the things that intrigued me, and I don't know... You, you guys you guys can tell me if this is the same way. But I really didn't know what this game was going to be like when I got it first. But I mean is I didn't understand... Like, there's a lot of different ways a CRPG can, uh, I can operate in terms of... It can be totally linear. It can be totally linear. There's one way of it going. There's a story. And once you do the story, you know, everything is basically placed, ready for the story. Nothing, you know, nothing's out of... I'm oh. tired of seeing your pan behind the bars. Oh, that's neat. He's talking to him. That's cool. Read the sheriff's journal. How about that? 
On Tuesday, they said Mostrum began to expand. Of course, no one in the city expects anything good to come of this. Nakamura stated the city should be closed to non-citizens and the number of patrolmen in Junktown should be doubled. An influx of refugees is expected. Junktown is restless. They haven't, there haven't uh, been any robberies or fighting. My guys know what they're doing. But the atmosphere itself is depressing. There's a lot of negativity. It's hard to tell rumors from useful information. I'm starting to understand why Nakamura ordered the city closed. She's trying to avoid a panic. By the way, the, about, uh, by the way, about the rumors, I was sitting at Beth's yesterday, listening to, on, in on people's conversations. There was a lot of suspicions, but uh, talk about the cave near Junktown. Spoke with the locals, and there. Oh, that was one of the quests that we got. Just got. Spoke with the locals, and there is indeed something off about the cave. Some some sneaky guys go, organized a commune there. Open it to anyone who wishes to join. I don't mind it myself, but I've heard that many of those who go inside never return. I asked Nakamura's per- permission to investigate, but they made it clear it's outside my jurisdiction, what it, which, extends, which extends to Junktown and no farther. Gotta write down the coordinates here in the margin. In my case, uh, in case my Kairos starts acting up again, I hope I get a chance to visit later on. Oh, that's neat. Oh, I can just go into a ventilation shaft? Where does that take me? Oh, let's read that. Tabloids of the 60s stirred up the muddy wave of eerie stories about kid- kidnapped children. Violence. Uh, that's the last thing you hear when you're going into some guy's basement. <laughs> Victims of violence chained in the basement and those who are there and those who uh, who kept them there. Although most of the frightening stories are fiction, they raise one important issue. We are so preoccupied with not accidentally getting into someone else's business that we've created a whole shadow world where evil is happening. A much worse evil than violating other people's personal boundaries. Dean Cartwright, what to read after uh, instead of the High Evening News, 1972. Jail basement. There's just t- so much free stuff sitting around. I mean, I guess it is weighing us down tremendously. I wish I could find an- another personal container. I didn't see any personal container here. So if we want a personal container, it's probably going to end up being... I don't know if anything's time sensitive either. It's another thing. I can check my journal. But I don't know if, even if it did, you know, I don't know if it would tell me, if it, even if it was. But yeah, I wasn't sure if the game's going to be, like, totally linear or or how it's really going to handle it <laughs> at all. So I'm kind of kind of curious. I mean, this is, I think my friend's got about the same length, uh, same distance in. So, suspicious cave, side mission, blood bets. Okay, main story is these two, and we got side missions. Um, got fridge. Get this. I hope if it does, if we do come to like some major story decisions, it'll be it'll let us uh, explore a little bit or give us some kind of indication. We get experience too. I'm looking at looting all this. Speaking of, can I share it with him? What rank is it? He's higher ranked than us, though. Some Starboy Latte Coffee Machine. Hey, we just got a coffee! Oh, don't tell me! Can I get as many co- coffees as I want? Hold on, or is that was, was it just the one? Okay, three instant coffees. Let's see. Three instant coffees. Okay, no, it's... I mean, I guess it might be broken. <laughs> Got Kurt's documents. Uh, data, misc, Kurt's documents. Is that down here? Oh, relationship. We'll read that in a second. Self-defense kit. Misc. Documents and notes. Letter and stationery. It's like a quest item thing. Or... Pile of scattered junk on official committee letterheads. Judging by the stamps and traces of the whole punch, most of them were once filed in a criminal case uh, containing the uh, many hard-hitting details about the illegal adventures of Kurt Spingler. Okay, that's interesting. Let's take that. But yeah, not sure how linear or whoop, how linear or 
how much wiggle room we're gonna get. Ooh, one out tape crackles out in the background of a welcoming speech. Oh, hey, is that the thing from the beginning? It's been a little, quite a few episodes since we saw that thing. It's funny, thinking about doing a game like this, which could be, you know, some games can be anything between 40 to a few hundred, you know, a few hundred hours. Uh, realizing doing one hour episodes has put me in a very funny position. Let's just break it open. I want to save my other stuff. And right now, I don't think there's a time crunch, so... And we could even just rest in these cots. I don't know. How, how are you doing? Wait, what? Hey, okay, just... they sh We share the inventory. Space. Um... I mean, what weapons is he good at? I mean, he's unarmed, right? So... Brass knuckles... In fact, actually, might might be good to take a quick look at what he can do. Uh, he's got some light weapons, but he's got hand to hand as a predominant thing. But he's light weapons and hand to hand, meaning that I want to give him a, one of his, his other weapon, a, a light weapon. Uh, so weapons. So that would be light weapon, light weapon, high tech weapon. Okay, and then there's a few different ones, but light weapons would be these two. The Astra and the Reaper. None of it's good compared to his melee. Or that great compared to his melee. The weapon range on that uh, pistol is way closer range though. Not that that really matters too much. Crit mod. We could take like a shotgun. That's a shotgun. A Reaper shotgun. Range to 12 meters. 0 to 16 meters. That's got a greater range. I mean, if he's melee, he might just want to hit them anyway. So a longer range weapon might be the better choice. And it's not that much extra damage. It does have a better range. 13 to 15. There's 11 to 14. But uh, reloading is 1. Reloading for that one is 2. Magazine size, much liar, uh, higher for this one. So I'm going to give him the pistol. For right now. Might be a bad choice, might not be a bad choice, don't know. We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Uh, Relic-wise, I might have a relic. I'm to use. Maybe. <laughs> I might. Oh, do we not scan this? I don't think we did. Okay, we gave experience to him, though. So I don't know if that was a good idea or not. Psychic resistance, increased resilience, lower. A spiral and active. Pin initiative lower but higher learnability, so we level up faster holding it. I guess we could get real min maxi and put it on and off. Um, let's see. I'm not really seeing anything else. Hold on, what about armor? Oh, we, uh, relics fall under armor. Okay, good to know. We have a lot of handgun cartridges. Uh, let's go ahead and reload that. What else can we do? When I, there's not really anything I, th I think off the top of my head that he needs. He's doing all right, but let's check it. Let's check his skills. His applied hand to hand is really nice. We could go and knock people out. I just realized he could be non-lethal. As much as he doesn't like non non-lethal combat, we could use him to totally just knock people out and not kill them. Uh, but, you know, we're going to try to cut even with them. We're, we'll try to be, we'll knock out, you know, we'll knock out a few people, we'll kill others. <laughs> because we've already killed a few people, that means we had to. And so, uh, is that a ladder back up the place it came from? Yeah, it is. Okay, where's a... Okay, did we grab everything? There's a toolbox. We can still grab stuff from. Here we are absolutely packed down with stuff. Locker. A flower pot we could still get stuff from. And cots we could sleep in. So this is kind of like a little base. Which is kind of neat. 
We could actually kind of we could actually use it as a little bit of a base. Let's have um Crump here drink some water himself. Uh shower stall too. I don't know if he's irradiated at all. Oh, broken toilet. Hold on, let's see. Take all and let's have us use a shower too. Oh, and there's a soapbox too. Hmm. Anything else? I think we got everything in here. Yeah. Looks like we got everything in here. Let's move. I will say it, it is neat. We could do. We could totally go non-lethal, but I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to stick with uh, what's realistic. What's realistic for the moment. We'll be doing non-lethal in situations where we can. And, and and go lethal uh versus monsters and stuff like that obviously because I guess if they get up then <laughs> not not super great for us cell door okay all that's illegal to break in okay can I open the oh I can I can grab through the Hey, uh, Crump, you're blocking it. There you go. And we can actually talk to him still. Crump impatiently shifts from one foot to the other. Finally! Something's happening! So, what's the plan, boss? <laughs> Ask him not to call you boss. Or say, continue to play, hit people when, that, when it's necessary. The muscle head cracks his knuckles and smiles gracefully. It's a great plan! I love it. All right, let's go. All right, let's think. Oh, there's another safe that we can take from in here. Ah, nothing in there. That's a shame. Oh, there's a locker we can reach in, though, and grab. So let's grab that. Ah, we got more stuff. Oh, is that, wait, did it say something like technology? Okay, never mind. Okay, let's run over here. Let's make sure we got everything. We got everything with the bar. There's some trash containers over here. Some places we haven't checked over here. Personal box. Wait, no way. Is this a... Is this like a house I could just stay in? It's locked. Wait, no way. Can I just break in the houses? I think I just break into the houses. Crump. Go ahead. Get us in. <laughs> Get us in, Crump. I mean, if I was going to just take a house, it's kind of funny that we're just starting, you know, we're taking the, the lock has been destroyed. There we go. Come on. <laughs> Our personal box. Hold on. Uh, okay. Let's take all this. We're way over encumbered. And then let's go down the, the, the chain here. Let's throw everything that's not obviously ours. Mobilizing grenade, or not obviously in use. Flamethrower, not using that. Pistol, we're not using that. Not using the shotgun, not using this pistol. That's a high tech pistol, right? Yeah, high tech. Uh, we're going to hold onto all the gloves, though. And the hammer, one hammer might be useful just for tools. Every, it was a, a heavy weapon, so no. And then we'll take the wrench. And that can be, I think that has a non-lethal application, but, you know, we can use the heat, and he can use other things to, to manage that. Okay, so, ooh, that would actually, hold on, what's his shoes? He's actually wearing those right now. Or is that what he, no, that's what, 250, 300. Increased fortitude, but this would be five to everything. Evasion. Oh no, five to almost everything. Evasion, mechanical resistance, a bunch of resistances. This is a boost to fortitude, a drop to evasion, but a plus, plus to. And that, but that would increase movement a little more. That's a hard one. Which one's better? It's hard to say. Unidentified relic? We'll pick in a second. We might wait for the relics to kind of really pick what we want. I might throw that in there, though. I'm not really thinking this is going to be super necessary either. Nor is the relic dust. We don't have the ability. There is, a believe, an ability we can do. 
Oh, we haven't identified that relic yet? No way. Maybe it was before I knew how to scan it. Okay, scan it. Neocorporeal. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this in. Uh, what else can we throw in? We can throw books. Pretty much all of the books. And the, the magazines can be helpful, but right now I'm going to just put them up. And they weigh nothing, so hold on. Actually, books. I might just take all the books, but leave those. Disinfectant's pretty heavy. I don't know if we need that much, but it's still probably a better bet than some of the stuff. Canisters are heavy. We're going to throw that back in. We're, we're almost back. We're almost out of being weighed down. Regent box. Let's throw that back in. How about tools? We want those. Tools are always good to have and bring around. Food's nice too, but we don't necessarily need to carry too much food. It's going to weigh us down without being really necessary. We can actually... I wish I could... Um, oh, there we go. Transfer some of that water in. I think I already did it. Yeah, I did. And we got the sodas. So that made us a little bit lighter in and of itself. Oh, what are those? Fuel? Fuel for flamethrowers. We're not using a flamethrower, so let's throw it in there. Carrying a tool belt. We're wearing a tool belt. Uh, we got the relics. Relics aren't that heavy. <laughs> they're pretty much, they're basically super light. So I don't think that's a problem. We have two of some stuff. Okay, so let's throw that in there. Throw that in there. We don't need two of the same thing. Anything else we're carrying that's a lot of weight? I mean, probably not medicines. Uh, components, probably. Can I... Oh, no, I can't do the whole, like... I was to perform upgrade on Cyglove. Really? We can do, like, an upgrade? I mean, we can't craft right now, so... And we are going to craft. We're going to come back here anyway. I might just put all components in our personal box. Can't really think of a reason why I need to be running around with components. Let's just throw this all in here. I'm actually kind of worried because we broke the lock on this thing. Is that meaning I can't lock it? And I'm just put like I'm just I'm just broken and inter broken and entered this little place here. I don't know if store all would work or if it's put all my stuff in. So that's why I'm with as much as we've already done organizational wise, I want to have to redo it. There we go. Okay, I think we're good on on weight now. We can actually rest a little bit. We can rest maybe. I wish I knew what that line was. Rest till noon. According to some uh, to some schools of psychoanalysis, an atmosphere of aggression and danger provides a heavy loop. No matter when you drift to sleep, your subconscious provides you with a juicy story. In your dreams, you walk through an archaic town. The word Victorian comes to mind. You can't remember where it came from. Catch a glimpse of a, uh, of a sign above the entrance. House of an at, uh, assign, assignation. Assignation? Assignation. Inside, you're welcomed by a madam of the house and her charming fairies. The second half of your dream, you recall only vaguely. In the morning, you wake up, have a smile on your face. Okay, when you wake up, you lie no longer enjoying your memories. Instead, if only such dreams happen every night. It does raise some questions, of course, but this is the dome. Anything could appear in your dreams. Okay, cool. Wait, did, did it not go to noon? Maybe that was this event that prevented us from sleeping too long? Noon. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Did, did both of us get? Did, do, do, does one only one of us sleep? No, but okay. It's good. We both we both not, and we he healed a little bit. Got twenty gold. Trash bin. Take some stuff. And we can go ahead and throw that compo those components in.
Now, it wasn't illegal to break into this van, so I'm guessing it's just here. Because we can, we can use this to... We're going to go over here with the Sam Bozeman. Oh, hello there. Shifty old died... Uh, a shifty-eyed old man with a mustache bends close to your. If you decide to go for sewage for sewage collector, be careful. There's a lot of dangerous stuff down there. Just, the churches, uh, churchers go sometimes, but even the giant cockroaches avoid their kind. See ya. Let's walk over to these doors. What's in here? I'm gonna avoid that guy for the moment. Is that literally just the other house? Don't give me. Uh, don't t don't tell me I can literally just break into all these houses. Hold on, can Crump literally just break the house? Can I literally just walk in? To relax. Come back later. No way! <laughs> and it's not illegal, I guess they really don't own it. Is this, is this, is it literally like a scam? Is that what it is? I mean, should this be illegal? <laughs> I mean, is it, am I trespassing? I mean, I don't know. I mean, right now, I don't really know what to say about this. I mean, I guess it, maybe there's just no law. <laughs> there's no, uh, no one really say different. Wash basin. I'm kind of curious if you put stuff like in the fridge and would it go away or do you have to just store everything in a personal box? I mean, this probably looks like a house because there's a personal box in it. Cabinet. They call personal box. I don't know, I don't, I, ooh, hold on. I'm actually kind of confused. Anyone else have this issue? I mean, I guess this is really good to have streamed it because now I now I get to kind of hear, you know, if anyone else has had this issue or this situation. It, I don't know if it's working as intended. I mean, can I close the door? I mean, I can close the door, right? I guess I can't lock the door. But I don't know how useful that is. I'm just gonna flush all the toilets and run off. Wooden ladder. That goes to something. A bunch of supply barrels back here. Oh, we could go back here too. We already checked. Oh, actually, no, we could go and get out. Yeah, like, nothing's illegal. I don't know. Oh, no, 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 that, that was illegal. Some of this stuff is illegal. But not not a lot of it. Oh, no, that's illegal. A lot of it's actually allowed. So if you're if you're looking around for stuff in this game, there's a, don't immediately assume that it's illegal. Because there's a, been so far a ton, ton of resources that it's just been just totally... Open for the taking. Search pile of papers. That. Trash container. Wouldn't matter. Oh, we can like kind of look over everything. That's neat. Open this door. Double doors. And the town's really nice. I mean, I, well, I guess... Junk town, but but I mean it's kind of neat that they made it. Wait, oh my gosh, it's those earth kind of shaking anomalies. What were they called again? Oh, we can actually check data. Misc. Oh no, 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 hold on. It's Codex anomalies. The Newton. The Newton. I mean, remember that's like Newton force. We got some, yeah the necro pearl and other things like that. First, I want to see what relationship with the planets are loving people with each their own values, concerns, and interests. The planet who has full trust in you will reveal all the secrets of the past, but if you were in the relationship, they'll leave the party. So pay attention to what you say. Companions can be controlled directly and can perform almost any action to the player. Evidence and investigation. So there's always evidence to be found on a crime scene. If a witness is nearby, they'll begin their own investigation and evidence. Okay, so, so if we go and do a crime, something to keep in mind, I guess. What's this up here? I guess that might be to a person. Is there a person in there? Hello? Uh, oh gosh! <laughs> what just happened? Crump! You okay, Crump? I 
We walked into a booby trap. Oh gosh! No! Crumb! Hold on. We can save him. Oh, hold on. Talk. Hold on. How do we use them? How, how, how do we use it? There's an actual... Hold on. There's a... Use on him. There we go. <laughs> I won't... Hold on. We'll go back down here. I don't want to just load back. I feel like that'd be a little cheesy. Reputation with Crump went down. How? The bruiser quizzing. I, mean, I guess he was upset, champion. but I mean, mm -hmm. can you blame us? The muscle head cracks. Oh, yeah, okay. The bruiser quizzically sticks out. Actually, can we look? Can we look at the reputation? That actually gives us a good reputation with Crump. There we go. Uh, personal approach has bore fruit. Crump approves of your action. Crump did not approve of your action. I'm guessing uh, Crump's confidence that you guys have been shattered when, since he nearly died at your command. Sorry, Crump. I mean, I <laughs> don't know what to say. I mean, let's heal up. Why not? We got all the time in the world. We're not going to the to nice relax, house. Oh, the door's I'll be door's locked again. Oh, so if we don't have a key, you have to just keep breaking in. I see. Okay, we'll break in again. Break our way in, and we'll have you rest. We'll have you sleep for a day. I don't think there's a time. I mean, we keep get. It's like you just get experience. So I wonder if you could just. Morning. Let's go to morning. Okay. Man, they did not heal that much. Okay, so let's go ahead and have everyone eat. Food. Where's our food? Let's start our day off with a nice can of heated beans. Consume heated beans and then have you heat, eat heated beans as well. Oh, he's not hungry at all. Or thirsty. Speaking of. It'd be better if I just use the medical equipment on him. Use on. Okay, come on. Come on, Crump. We gotta go around. Ah, uh, because I still need you to break a few, th few doors. I think this is another house? I think this is another house. Okay, so it, you can just break in and, and squat in the house if you need to. But you, you, and you won't get in trouble for that. But hey. It's neat to know though. Alright, let's talk to this guy. Kate, all right, let's talk to Caitlin actually. Oh, good day. I went in the black wing uniform and standing next to the boom barrier. She gestures for you to stop. Caitlin Tanzer, City Security Service. Show me your Selectron. Free, uh, the, uh, hold on. The city is closed until further notice from Secretary Nakamura. Mind you, if you suddenly decide to shoot me so you can get into the city, the gate is controlled from the other side. Others have tried. Tried, yeah. And an unpleasant smile flashes across her face. Now give her electronic key. Ask why the quarantine was introduced. Ask who Nakamura is. Ask when the quarantine we lifted. Ask, uh, examine the guard more closely. Both Caitlin and her uniform have, have seen better days. An abundance of chevrons, badges, and braid, and braid is intended to draw attention away from the worn patches, frayed cuffs, and discoloration. Nevertheless, Black Wing's eyes are full with determination. She uh, examines you in return with a wry face. You, if they want something to stare at, go to the bar. That's not why I'm here. Uh, why was the quarantine introduced? How about that? The guard frowns thoughtfully. Ask the, uh, ask the scientist. I think it's because the maelstrom gives people visions and drives them mad, sometimes irreversibly mad. Nobody knows whether it's contagious or not, so they've introduced the quarantine. She jerks her thumb over her shoulder at the gate. For some reason, the city is considered the safest place. When maelstrom uh, became active, we, flood, uh, we were flooded with refugees, the city and Magellan. Hmm? Okay. I 
think we already read this. Yeah. Find a nod and give her electronic key. Ask who Nakamura is. Uh, Tinsler adjusts her peak cap. Is this a joke? Chairwoman Kimiko uh, Nakamura. Uh, Kimiko Nakamura is the head of the new committee, the only legitimate authority under the dome. Ask when the quarantine will be lifted. The black uh, black wing rolls her eyes. Uh, she obviously de- uh, gets this question all the time. They don't report these things to me. The quarantine was introduced when Maelstrom began to spread. As soon as the Maelstrom problem was lift- uh, is solved, Nakamura will cancel the pass. Uh, will cancel the pass control protocol. Um. Bye-bye. Wait. We we still have to think about that other person. Let's talk to this guy. We still have people to talk My to. Dearly beloved oh, let's listen to him real quick. Dome. Brothers and sisters, pause and listen and think. Give suicide what orders. What brought you here to this desert? Was it money? Adventure? Goodwill? One thing every one of us has in common. We all came here seeking the best for ourselves and the world. And we are all frustrated. This frustration seems impossible to avoid. But what if the church could give you the answers you crave? These teleglasses, they are everything we ever expected from the dome. They are happiness and a better world. They are adventure. They are your loved ones and dearest friends. Your memories. They are the future we've all lost. And these things, everything, will be yours if only you attend our sermon. The doors of the church are always open. We'll be waiting for you. Okay, that was an interesting to see. He either has a lot of health or that medkit barely did anything to him. Consume medkit. Is it just a random amount, maybe? Maybe have him eat something. Just for the healing. Something that won't give him a, a debuff. Hunger, nasty food, slightly poisonous. Maybe give him this because, uh, just have him use or consume that. There we go. My help. My dearly beloved people of the dome, brothers and sisters. Oh, I think he's starting again. And listen. Hold and on, was that what he said before? What brought you here to this desert? Was it money, adventure, goodwill? One thing every one of us has in common. We all came here seeking the hmm. best for ourselves and the world, and we are all frustrated. This frustration seems impossible to avoid. But what if the church could give you Okay, yeah, we have heard this. Strange These pictures succeed on uh, they are strange everything pictures we ever expected so, uh, from the dome. succeed they each other on television screen shaking and twitching. Let's run up world. and talk to him. They are adventure. A giant man spreads his arms in greeting. Impenetrable black glasses hide at least half his face. The stranger smiles. Reverend Santiago at your service. Is this about my sermon, the priceless gift of the new world? I could check you in. He embraces you with his strong, warm arms, smiling all the while. Uh, say, uh, we, well, we'll ask him what the sermon's about. Let's do the neutral. The reverend laughs in a not very sincere or charitable way. Not talks, my friend. The time of words has passed. Through the teleglasses, we show you a wonderful world you can conquer with the power of your mind. You must see it. What day is good for you? Uh, say we're ready to listen for it. Santiago Let's replies with a deep bow. That's wonderful. I'll be waiting right here for you tonight. What? <laughs> My dearly beloved people of the dome, brothers and sisters, pause and I listen and think. Such a life is not for what me. brought you mm. here to this desert? And does that mean that he has more to say? The bruiser quizzically sticks out his chin. No, mm-hmm. no. The muscle head. All right. Every one of us Let's has talk to Robert Katz. We all... Hello. The man in white uniform shakes his head in displeasure, arms folded. You're headed to the emulator office. Uh, to the emulator office. Don't bother. They rejected me. He said I wasn't a suitable research pro- subject. He sniffs in annoyance. As a scientist, I dispute this conclusion. The incident influ- uh, uh, influenced everyone, from those hiding underground to those in the mountains on the expedition. And what, and what about those who were at the center of the dome? Must have been horrible for them. Come back again. <laughs> Speaking of... Oh, mobile generator. Engine rumbles the generator. Hmm. 
Mario here. Oh. That is what it says, man. A small man, yeah, Mario Berlucci. A small man with a gray beard, tussled by the wind, is resting in the shadow of the city wall. Mario Berlucci, hand, hand, uh, handyman. Says the badge on the orange uniform. A dirty diesel generator rumbles a few meters away. Berto, Berto Lucci si uh, stares absently at it uh, through the purple lenses of his teleglasses. Ask him what he's doing. Ask him what he's seeing in his teleglasses right now. Ask him to try it on his teleglasses. Let's ask what he's seeing. His, uh, let's ask him what he's doing. The orange points to the generator and says proudly, "I'll watch over the diesel generator and make sure the screen uh, and make sure the screens are running." I'm oh, sorry, and make sure the screens are running. Santiago himself asks for my help. Ask for what he's seeing in his teleglasses now. Mario opens his mouth, the, uh, though he obviously wanted to share. He's too overwhelmed with emotion to speak. Sobbing, he shakes his head, unable to find the right words. There's so much love in the world. He says, I have a blue and a quavering, vo qu uh, quavering voice. The tears run down. Uh, tears run from his jaw under the glasses. Ask for what you may try on his teleglasses. He calls for me. No, these are mine, my glasses. Make a donation to the church and they'll give you a pair. Come back again. I'm curious. I'm kind of curious what, what we're going to see if we do get any. We got more people with Stefan Braun. Oh, hello there. A man in a dirty blue, uh, uh, dirty blue wing overalls and dirty blue wing overalls cheerfully hoists up an, uh, his empty bottle when he sees you drawing near. Hey, buddy, pal. Hey, can you believe it? I fed Russo a story about me having all these symptoms. And, he actually, and she actually bought it. What an idiot hot! The blue takes a sip from his bottle to his disappointment. Discovers it has already been drained. Drained. Uh, he examines the bottle with a befuddled look for a moment, rocking on his heels and laboriously shifts his gaze toward you. I'm in t I'm thinking about uh, what to spend my hundred combons on. Looks like the f first item on my list is clear. First man, uh, first m man once again. Uh, sorry, the man once again checks his bottle and is de empty and then throws it away. Come back again. Have to Glad to meet here. you. The middle-aged cigarette-smoking man standing before you is wearing a blue wing uniform. He looks to, uh, like he could use some sleep. We only got, he only just got used to the life after the incident, and now, bang! Those, uh, those guys with their emulator thing are causing new rough patches to crop up. You know, I can still hear strange sounds in my head, and my dreams, or dreams are weird too. It was nice chatting. Weird. Emulator. For the physically gifted employees, there is a chance that you under, un, uh, chance you will experience multiple side effects of unclear etiology and runtime mode. And there, uh, is there, and there, it is therefore recommended you undergo regular examinations in the project's med bay. In case of a critical performance drop, contact HR department immediately. Emulator project. Hmm. Stories updated. Let's see, you wandered around Junk Town. You found the enemy. Okay. Oh, it's kind of just keeping track of all, everything. Adolf Schmitz. Hiya. I feel like he sounds familiar. Wasn't he the guy who was preventing us from leaving the first place? A tall man in a spotless black uniform takes steps towards you and greets you with a brief, firm handshake. Oh, Adolf Schmitz. Chief of Security Services for the Emulator Project. The man points to a poster in that reads, Maintain Sterilization Regimen While on Sight. His face seems vaguely familiar. Uh, take a closer look and try to remember where you might have seen him. His bearing, his clean iron black uniform, and even his name, Adolf Schmitz, all stir vague memories. Of course, Schmitz served in Concord before the incident. This was the man who stopped you by the turnstiles. Yeah, we were right. And sent you to the security to talk to Kingsley. Uh, remind him the two of you met at Concord. Schmitz uh, nods slowly. Of course, I remember. I've been working in Con uh, I've been working in Concord since they opened. If you're from under the dome, then we definitely met. It's only o that's only logical. He frowns while plucking at dust particles, uh, which had the audacity to stick to his sleeve. Ask him what the sterilization. Remind him of your encounter, September 14, 1976. The closed turnstiles, Kingsley, Nashville. Let's do it. Smith pulls himself away from what he was doing and looks at you intently. You? But there was an incident in Nashville. Everyone was killed. A tight grin appears on his face. I don't believe you. We, we get many insane people coming around from the church. Uh, sorry, coming around here. Some of the church who want to worship the Maelstrom and some of them uh, who think the emulator can help them find their missing, missing families. Uh, are you one of those who claim to have survived the Maelstrom? Come on in, in then. Talk to Henrietta. She'll examine, and reach a, examine you and reach a verdict. 
But for God's sake, put some booties on over your shoes. Ask him what the sterilization regimen means. Uh, the Black Wing pins uh, you in with a stern, judgmental stare. You're staying in a scientific research facility next to high-precision equipment. It's very sensitive to contamination. And look at your shoes. I can't even let uh, in here like that. Put on some booties immediately. Okay. Uh, ask him where the emulator project is or tell him about your headaches and strange visions. Ask him about the... Okay. The Black strains his collar as if to prepare to give a lecture. The emulator is a simplified model of the Maelstrom that should help people into the dome learn how to control it. That's the extent of my knowledge. If you want details, you should see. You should talk to Henrietta Russo. She's the director of this place, straight down the hall. Schmitz points down to the big glass door. Tell them about your headaches and strange visions. Adolf nods. If you need an examination, find Henrietta Russo, straight down the hall. I hope to see you again soon. Oh, it's a vending machine. <laughs> Buy a soda. Take a quick soda. And take more stuff. No cleaning equipment is safe from us. Or toilet. <laughs> Apparently. Mirror. Okay. Let's see. We could talk to people around here. Maybe this is that technology they were talking about. Emulator sounds some oh broken Vega machine. Oh, let's go over talk and check with this thing. Oh, we search it. Oh, free stuff. Where are the odds? <laughs> All right, let's go and take some stuff. Henrietta is the one we're looking for. William Tag. Uh, these people look like an isolated containment. Kind of worried about that. Maybe I'll talk to them before I do anything else. Open door to laboratory. Medcom. Oh, hey, there we go. No person on your team. Send Crump to the Medcom. Uh, store Companions Health. Oh my gosh, that's a good amount. <laughs> okay, Orange Pads Medcom amiably on the side and walks away. Okay, never mind. Uh, we could just beat him. How about that? We really have to do stuff. Dropper. I don't know what we're doing. Okay, let's talk to Henry, Harry Dolmer here. How about that? Greetings. Uh, hey, a bald man with neither mustache or beard taps in the glass. Hey, do you have a smoke? They give uh, they give me everything I need in here except cigarettes. Apparently, they keep uh, they make my blood vessels constrict and make me sick. But that's <laughs> but that's crap. I always feel better when I smoke. What do you say? Uh, to wow, uh, I have. I either say I don't accept. I don't. I can't stand. I. You cannot stand beggars. Say I'll definitely give him the cigarettes right after he answers a few questions, or say refuse. You can't. You cannot stand. I cannot stand beggars. Attention, attention. Please handle relics uh. I don't know what to do here. I feel, okay, say we'll give him the cigarettes, but after he answers a few questions. He shakes his head. What, what questions? Are you kidding? My head's splitting here. I'm asking for a cigarette. You help me out, right? Thank you. Okay, that got us out. He didn't answer the question, so ha! We don't have to tell him anything. We don't have to give him anything. Behind the glass stands a man with an indeterminate age. His age is a mystery because the glass itself is covered with stains. When he sees you, the man approaches the glass and begins to wipe it clean with his palm in slow, circular movements. A uh, movements. A small white, uh, li small white lights flicker in his eyes. Read the sticker on the glass. The explanatory sticker is made of thick, transparent film covered with small, dark red letters. Sample eleven, type A two, William Tag, Blue wi wi uh, Blue Wing employee, expeditionary unit assigned to Magellan Base, delivered it's February eighth, nineteen seventy eight. Cognitive function suppressed. Physiology normal. General muscle tone reduced. There's an indifferent, indistinct high, uh, halo effect in his eyes, and there, and he is unhealth, he is unhealthily fixated on repetitive actions. Reactions to the maelstrom include increased physical activity, panic, making sounds that cannot be produced by the human vocal cords. And Sandra Valverde. A woman with faded, greasy hair is in front of the window. She's frowning, though her head is slightly lowered. Her gaze follows your every move. Tiny white uh, lights are flickering in this woman's eyes. For a moment, 
uh, one could mistake the effect for unhealthy shine, but you're, you've already met people with this condition, Halo Eye. Let's try to get it inside her mind. You press her forehead against the glass, and the woman takes slow steps forward as if walking on the water. You look at each other. The, the, the minds of those aff uh, afflicted by the maelstrom is not the unhealthiest psychological environment. It is like you're fighting your way through a dense mist of, or something more viscous, like dough and tangling identical thought form nodules. Her brain is out of a zombie. It produces only uh, primitive electrical impulses controlling nothing. The mental space quickly becomes is illuminated in a quick picture emerges from the dense gray shreds the hall of an underground complex illuminated by a harsh white light dozens of people hover in the air wrigg wriggling and bending in space as if their bodies had no bones oh gosh uh the one presses her face against the glass glass the white lights in her eyes are, qu are quivering and she and she too trembles her uh she throws her head back and strikes her forehead against the glass enough for uh force to rattle the glass panel in its frame the picture in her head flashes out all, uh, out at once to be re replaced with a featureless mist. Read the sticker on the table. Small red letters are printed on transparent film glued to the glass. You have to strain your eyes to read them. Sample 6, Type A, Sandra Melverde, Silverwing employee, warehouse, Ankara base. Delivered June 17, 1978. Cognitive function suppressed, physiological, physio physiology normal, general muscle tone reduced. She suffers moderate halo eye nightmares and anxiety reacts to maelstrom and increased activity and aggression hmm do we already loot these no free money aha okay anything we can check with Lead, lab door office cabinet laboratory flower pot there's a bunch of flower pots he wants us to put booties on I don't know where I'm supposed to get booties. <laughs> I don't know if he's just joking. <laughs> Fighting Come spirit. Come on, don't be. Good day to you. Please put on booties before entering the laboratories. He says, pulling himself from his from his work for a second. Ask him how he survived the Cotton Concord. The black wing contemplates the shining floor tiles as he display as if they're displaying pictures from his past. We were lucky; another bus arrived when we heard a sound of thunder, uh, of a sound like a thunderclap, and saw most from spreading in the sky over Nashville. He says, "It all looks at you. We we left everything behind. It was a panic, not an evacuation. We packed ourselves in that bus and headed straight to Magellan." Maelstrom was already heading toward us when we started. Uh, when we started, that's how he avoided the Maelstrom's impact. Schmidt uh, Schmidt tilts his head to show a couple of pink surgical scars at his temple. I didn't at first. I was having terrible migraines, hallucinations. I thought I'd go nuts. The X-ray showed an aneurysm, but when the doctors opened my head, they didn't find anything. By the time the whites, uh, the white wings were already uh, starting to suspect something unusual, I was sent to Henrietta, and that's the story of our acquaintance. The emulator. Needed a, uh, need a reliable security de detail, so I stayed. The black wing shrugs his shoulder as if to apologize for his story. And as long as I'm here, no one visits the emulator, is going to nuisance or distract the researchers. That's my mission. Adolf adds with a serious frown. Bye bye. Okay, so. Trash bin? I wonder if it's in the trash bin. I can't tell if it's just a joke. <laughs> Or if he's gonna get angry at me. You never know in, in CRPGs. Sometimes like, it's an actual item and there's like special stuff if you do what people tell tell them to do. Um, Dr. Rousseau's office over there. Oh, there's a laboratory over here. Why don't, let's check in here. Oh, door storage. Okay, that's illegal. Sebastian Van Olden. Oh, it's him! It's Sebastian Van Olden. It's that guy from before. Uh, hey, uh... Crump, you're blocking me. Thank you. Crump might get upset at us for if he ends up accidentally almost dying multiple times. I hope there's ways that we can uh, keep that from getting too bad. Maybe gifts or something. Again, it depends on how linear it is, I guess. Let's talk to Sebastian here. Glad to meet you. The man with a broad bald spot is excitedly scanning a small relic covering over the table. You, you, uh, you've definitely seen this thoughtful man in a white lab coat somewhere before. 
It's, yeah, it's the guy from uh, when we were doing the tutorial. Okay, try to remember where you saw him from. Finally, you recall his name, Sebastian Van Olden. He is an instructor at Concord. He taught you how to use a scanner. Wait until he finishes his work. Pulling himself away from his work, he adjusts his glasses and squints. I want to make this perfectly clear. I don't have time for idle talk, so keep your questions brief. I do the same with my answers. Some experiencing headaches or find out uh, how the instructor of Concord ended up on the emulator project. Let's, let's see that. Van Olden goes pale. Let me tell you something. Uh, let's let me make something clear. I'm the public. I'm a published professor with a doctorate from the University of Bur- of Bern in Switzerland. Not some trade school instructor. Sebastian angrily smooths down his frizzy hair, which springs back up at once. I fulfilled my responsibilities at Concord just fine, and I and the initiative to provide those briefings was mine. I wanted it done right, so I did it myself, as the adage goes. You ask how I got here? Unlike you, Russo has a keen eye for ability and potential. Does that answer your question? He crosses his arms and glares at you. Ask him what he's working on. How about that? The scientist points at the relic. I, I, I've anal- uh, I analyzed the magnitude of the relic field in order to tra- track correlation with the Maelstrom's abnormal activity. I should note that the activity has been growing stead- steadily of late. Did you ask what I'm busy with? Busy is the exact word in this context. I am busy, I understand. The white returns to his relic. He has no interest in conversation. Tell him experiencing headaches and occasional hallucinations. Scientist peers at your face with a couple, a couple, uh, for a couple of seconds. Does this more precisely describe your amnesis? A humming sound sim- familiar, uh, similar to a ringing gong, bright flashes of white light. Your irises are normal, suggesting the Maelstrom's influence merely grazed you. Find Henrietta Rousseau in the emulator's main hall. She'll want to examine you. I have to work, so I must ask you. He points to the door with his chin. It was nice chatting. First raid his office. <laughs> They're all so nice letting me just take what I want. Actually, however... Howdy. I'm going to see if I can buy medkits if he has them. No, unfortunately he does not, but he will... S- I can sell him stuff, though. He has a ton of money. Aw, oh, that's a shame. I didn't bring a lot of stuff to sell. Um, Didn't think I'd need to. I don't really need a huge amount of temp- influence, but... I guess I could sell him the airplane. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's kind of like we're on our own now, so we don't have to follow the rules. It might be helpful to save us out of a situation or two. How much will we buy that for? I'll buy it for something, so why not? <laughs> have that. Come back again. Oh, do we? Hold on. Do we give it to him Glad for to free? I hope to see I you think again we did. soon. <laughs> I think we did. Well, let's keep running. Actually, hold on. Let's work for Crump. Let's make sure his uh, he changes boots. So that this one that that will let him move a little faster, and it's a little different, but it should be interesting to see how that works. Briefcase. Ah, nothing. Hmm. Seeing anything in here? You, okay, hold on. That's the storage thing. Let's go to the lab door, control room. That's Henrietta Rousseau. We'll talk to her, and that might be the last thing for the for the for this episode. Ooh, fire post. A lean woman is hunched over the console, hair pulled back in a tight knot. As the doors close behind you with a quiet hiss, she turns briskly to face you. You have an appointment, an examination. Am I right? No, this. You must submit to a blood test and show me your Selectron as your ID. Some sly dogs have been coming around twice for an extra hundred. Her voice is firm and loud, and she's spinning a ring of keys on her finger, one that was sticking out of the console a moment ago. The badge on her white coat reads, Henrietta Russo, Project Director. The coat itself is flecked with several stains in different colors. Rousseau follows your gaze down to her soiled coat. It's soda. This crap doesn't wash off. 
Oh, okay. So tell me you found the body of Ricardo Alexander near Nashville. Ask her where this place is. Uh, say you're hallucinating. Say I saw a blue beam over the slums. Say you slept in stasis and a dream you woke up under the... Okay, let's say about the body first. Henrietta makes a forced gurgling sound, either a loud sigh or a sob. I have long since realized what happened. Still. Oh. It's bad. Very bad. Ricardo was so... You know, very much alive. He never behaved his age. He even looked younger than he actually was. He always joked that we were siblings. Twins separated by the time. Russo purses her lips. Even now, she doesn't cry. After a brief silence, Henrietta shakes her head. All right. You know I've always been this way. I can't deal with personal issues in public. Let's get back to work. And I'll pretend everything's all right. Let's go down the list. Ask her where this place is. A baffled grimace appears on the woman's flushed face. Then why are you here? Don't you want your examination, medical assistance, and a hundred calm bonds to guzzle away in Beth's bar? She spreads her arms as if to embrace the entire hall. This is Emulator, the place they began to build immediately after the incident. As you can see, it's still being built, so I can't show you any miracles yet. Let's Anything mention the stasis. Else? The white chuckles sarcastically. <laughs> Let me guess. The thing that flashed was the hundred combons you'll get for undergoing the examination. She gives you an apologetic pat on the shoulder. Don't get mad. It's just that I get told about hallucinations by nearly everyone I meet. That's why you have to pass the simplest test right now. I have to be certain you really cross paths with Maelstrom. The White explains, taking a notebook out of her pocket. So, first question. Where did you contact Maelstrom? Russo taps pen on pad impatiently. Hmm. Uh, do we want to be totally honest? I guess we'll be totally honest. Why not? Tell her something about. Tell her the cave in Nashville saw a shining red ball. Tell her Maelstrom is traveling for mission. Ask a vas answer evasively. Okay, tell her about the cave in Nashville. The white gives you a skeptical look but makes no comment. Russo writes something down and turns the page. Second question. Describe your interaction with Maelstrom. Hmm. Tell her you're surrounded by white fog and, saw, and spoke to people that were other in the mist. Or tell her if was it, someone feeling your consciousness. Or tell her you're really scanning your hurt. Or let's tell her about... Let's just be straight up honest with her. The pen stops in Henrietta's fingers. Okay. You are navigating the fog and talking to them. She shuts the notebook. Let's get down to your examination. Stand here. I'm going to prepare special parameters for the scan. This will take some time. Russo puts the scanner back on the computer console and studies you, deep in thought. I could use a smoke after that. And I don't smoke, by the way. She says. Henrietta walks a full circle around you and stops in front of you again. What can I say? That was the best hundred we've ever spent. Your vitals are downright incredible. The sensors are off the scale. Even the fobs don't show these metrics. And unlike them, your brains haven't turned into mush, supposedly. I'm going to say this now. I need you to become part of this project. What do you say to that? The white is looking at you expectantly. Um... What's the fops? The rest of the reachers of the dome is controlled by the gang of fops that have sprung up from the barrens after the incident. The fops are dangerous and crazy tramps who wear carnival masks and homemade outfits crafted by trash and old Cronus uniforms. Fops' minds have been destroying, destroyed by the Maelstrom Scion energy and therefore don't negotiate or surrender and don't participate in the political life of the dome. Okay. Tell her to participate. Russo raises an eyebrow. Hmm, yeah? Let's cut to the chase. Henrietta gestures for you to come over. She stops near the control panel to examine a massive construction hanging from the ceiling of the main hall. She fixes you with her gaze. Long story short, in 1976, the incident started in Nashville. Maelstrom broke free of the excavation zone, destroyed the spire, and killed a lot of people. And those who weren't killed outright had their brains fried into non-existence. 
If that was an experiment, I'd call it a total fail. Russo raises her head to study the green lights high up under the complex's ceiling with acute fascination. Everybody was in a panic all that year, waiting every day for the end of the world. But Nakamura was able to overcome the disturbances and evacuated the bigger part of the survivors here. She offered autonomy to anyone who wanted it, those from Phalanx and Carmine Heights, and decided that something must be done about Maelstrom in the center of the dome. Thus, the emulator was born. Okay, White Swan, ambitious scientific cluster pro uh, project facilitating experimentation with the forefathers most advanced technology at the moment. White Swan is the only research station under the dome inhabited by the operator exclusively by scientists. Phalanx, we already, we already know about Phalanx and Carmine Heights. Uh, we, already, we already know about them, too. Henrietta clasps her hands behind her back and walks around the room. Things went quite well over the next two years. Maelstrom showed no activity, and all the trials were right on schedule. But several months ago, our sensors detected that Maelstrom had begun to grow, to become stronger. From my own calculations, I realized we needed the help of all those different people. Someone needs to search for relics for the emulator, and help with the coding. Otherwise, the Nashville Megalo Anomaly will overtake us. It will be too late. The White clenches her teeth and shakes her head. It's the first time you've ever seen her this serious. That's why they're here. Spencer. Abbott and his nutty buddy, Santiago. And of course, Karma. Our relationship with her has been sour since day one. Kimiko sacrificed a lot for them to be here. And I... I only... lost control over the project. You know, I would shove my ambitions and call it a day, if that was of any use to the emulator, but... So, Spencer for Phalanx, Church of Maelstrom's Abbot, and Karma is Carmine Heights. Okay. She points downwards. From the edge of the balcony, you can see a mishmash of burnt wires and the melted remains of some relic. Now it's all gone to hell. The price has already been paid, but there were no results. The trials were unsuccessful. That's why I need help. And that's why I believe you're twice as valuable an employee. Russo sinks into the chair. Told you. Welcome aboard. I forgot to add that this Titanic is barely staying afloat. And there's another iceberg dead ahead. But we can still sail through. If we really do give it our best. Henrietta is sitting behind the console, visibly tired. Attention. She's taken her shoes off and you can see bright green socks peeping out from the edge of the console. I am a bit short of breath from that pretentious speech, but hopefully you can understand we have the same goals now. And it's time for us to discuss the details. Shall we? She waits for you to agree. Ask, ask about the socks. Russo glances under the console. What about them? They're green, they're cool, they create a mood. Right now, I'm in the mood to talk about business. So let's talk. Let's tell her about Great. that we're listening. Let's begin. Henrietta opens her notebook. She runs her eye rapidly over the lines. Past trials were unsuccessful. That's why it's so important to do everything right and get the system ready for the new trials and a test run as soon as possible. Let's see what we... Biting her Oop, lip, Russo checks her notepad. Let's start with the driver. It's not installed. Karma Ishtwani is responsible for it. Her door is next to mine, by the way. Find out what's going on. Next, our transcriptor got fried during the recent trials. The new one is supposed to arrive via Phalanx caravan, but uh, nothing's come yet. Go poke Don Spencer. He must know something about it. Spencer usually hangs out with his caravan buddies in the market square. She makes a note in her notebook. Yes, you should also talk to those nutty church people. Santiago, he usually preaches near the city entrance. Promise me a special version of the teleglasses to connect to the emulator. And what do you suppose he's given me so far? Nothing. I still haven't seen those damn glasses. The white seems to be losing her temper a little bit at a time. 
She rubs her forehead tiredly and sets her notebook aside. Everything isn't going smoothly for us either. Since the tests, the system's power supply hasn't been restored. Talk to technician Clayton Montgomery on Magellan's reactor level. I almost forgot. The emulator needs anomaly essence to work. This essence can be found in various parts of the dome, but we don't have a lot of time. Do you know about the picnic neutral zone? Well, that place in the swamps is full of anomalies. Talk to the people out there. They'll have essence for sure. Henrietta grows absent, perhaps reviewing what she said in case she's forgotten anything important. Russo looks at you. So, this is what we're going to do. I'm staying here to prepare the trial program and make sure no one fiddles with the emulator. You handle everything else. Better start with Magellan. I have a feeling they've got some hidden agenda, okay? Uh, okay, uh, tell her you'll do as she asks and move away. Okay. So, that was an inter interesting converse, uh, conversation. We still need, we need to talk to, uh, Karma here. Still in a second, but we gotta wait. So we're gonna save here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a great one. Attention. Always a lot of fun to watch. And, uh, have a great, uh, great, uh, time. Until tomorrow, then. Alright, bye, everybody. Bye!